Hello everyone, I want to come to you today and I want to pray a prayer over your mind today. That's what I feel in the spirit. One of the first stories that comes to my mind, and I want to lay a foundation just for a moment, but one of the first stories that comes to my mind is when we look at the Garden of Eden and we see that the serpent came to Eve. He tried to convince her that she didn't have all that she needed and he came against her identity. The Bible says that when Adam and Eve were in the garden, the way that the enemy came to attack them was he started to talk to Eve. He wanted to get into her mind. I want to tell you that when the devil comes against you to attack you, that's where he's going to attack you. He wants to attack you in your mind. He wants to challenge you in your relationship to God. He wants to challenge you in the things that God wants to do in your life. He wants to come into that secret place, that garden that Adam and Eve would walk in in the cool of the evening and God would come and visit them and he would talk to them and the devil wants to come in those seasons and those moments in that secret place, your prayer closet, when you're trying to touch God and you're trying to be intimate to God and you're trying to open yourself up and you're trying to maintain your relationship to God and the enemy tries to come in with questions. He wants to distract you. He wants to get your ear. He wants to twist everything that God has said and done in your life and he wants to challenge you on it. He wants to fight you on it. Why? Because the enemy knows that if he can get in your head, if he can get in your ear, then he can wrestle away that relationship that you have with God. And the first thing you know, you won't be going to your prayer closet like you used to. And you won't be living your life with God like you used to. He wants to challenge you. He wants to destroy your garden. It reminds me of the Bible speaking of little foxes that come in and spoil the vines. They come in to steal the fruit of the relationship that you have with God. And instead of being a place where God can communicate with you, love you, shower blessings and mercy upon you, come and talk to you in the cool of the evening every day, the devil wants to turn it into a place of disobedience where you dishonor God and challenge God's word and don't believe him. We see this so effectively in the life of Jesus when he went into the temptation. The Bible says that the devil began to challenge him and say, if you are the son of God, can I tell you that the devil wants to challenge you in your identity. He wants to challenge you in your thought process of who you are, who God is, what God is doing in your life. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. The Bible says in John chapter 10 verses 4 through 5, And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger they will not follow, but will flee him, for they know not the voice of strangers. The enemy's sole desire is to come into your garden, into your secret place, and he wants to get there to disrupt you. He wants to distract you. He wants to ruin your relationship with God. He wants to whisper to you, to challenge you on the things that God has spoken over you, promises that God has given in his word, things that God is saying that he wants to do in your life, declarations, promises, provision. He wants to challenge you and make you think that God is withholding things from you on purpose, that if you had these other things that you would be more complete and more able and more whole and more full, and that you're missing out on life because you're not getting to experience the things that the devil is trying to convince you of. The devil tries to come in and create confusing thoughts, thoughts of deception, voices that twist and manipulate and they're accusing thoughts. They challenge God's word and decrees over you. And one of the things that I've seen that happens in life is that the devil, after he entices you to do all the things that he entices you to do, he ends up in becoming the greatest accuser. The Bible says that he is an accuser of the brethren. He accuses us daily before the Father. But I love what the Bible says in Romans chapter 8 verse 1. It says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. The Greek word for condemnation there is katakrima, and it means the result of a judgment or a decision against someone. Perhaps like Eve, you have sinned, you have fallen short, you're the one that messed up, it's your fault. You have to take the blame. You can't blame anyone else. You have to accept responsibility. But can I tell you that when you confess your sins and you repent of your sins, that he is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins? Can I tell you that maybe you have sinned and maybe it's your fault, maybe your life when you look back on it is the result of a life of bad decisions, bad choices, desires that you followed that were not of God and now you're looking at a life of heartbreak, heartache and come to the decision, you know what, this is just my life and this is the way it's going to play out and this is my future. 
But I want to tell you that regardless of what you're going through, regardless of what you have faced, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. God will forgive you whether it is your fault or whether you're the one that created the problem or not. God wants to forgive you. He wants to love you. He wants to come alongside of you. He wants to wrap his arm around you. He is always looking for a way to restore the relationship. I command every attack that's tried to come against your identity, against your relationship with God, against your prayer time and your secret place with God would be broken off of you right now. I command that your mind would be saturated with the peace and the love and the nurturing nature of God, that God would be able to wrap his arms around you. I command that your secret place, your prayer closet, your place of intimacy with the Lord would be protected and every deceitful voice and every voice that has tried to come against you would be renounced and removed right now. I cover you right now with the love and the nature and the peace of God. May God wrap his arms around you right now. May you feel his love and joy. I want you to just picture him wrapping his arms around you right now as you lay your head upon his chest and he's got his arms wrapped around you and he's loving you. He's holding you and protecting you from the storm. He's protecting you from the violence of the enemy. He's protecting you from the attack of the enemy. He's letting you know how much he loves you and cares for you. I command every attack of the enemy that's come against your identity would be broken right now by the authority of the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I command every attack of the enemy that has tried to come against your relationship and your place, your secret place with God would be renounced and removed and broken right now in the authority of the name of Jesus. Let the peace of God come upon you right now. Let God just saturate you right now with his love and joy and peace. The Bible says in John chapter 10, verse 10, the thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus said, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. If you want to know what the devil's intentions and plans are for you, there's nothing good in his plans for you. He wants to steal everything precious in your life. He wants to steal your health, your joy, your mind. He wants to steal your family. He wants to steal your finances. He wants to steal your plans, your purpose, your future. Everything that God has wanted to do in your life, the devil wants to steal it. The devil wants to come into your garden and steal those precious moments. He wants there to be condemnation by the time he's done with you. He wants there to be brokenness. He wants the relationship with God to be over. Some of you have gone away from God. Some some of you are wondering if God's even around. You're wondering if you've sinned too much or done too many bad things in your life for God to even reconcile or renew this relationship in you. And I want you to know that yes, indeed, God can restore the relationship and God wants to cover you. God wants to bring you into a unity with Him. God's trying to give you a life and life more abundantly. If you see something in your life that does not resemble what God wants to do, it's an attack of the enemy. If your situation has anything but that in it, then I'm telling you it's the sign of the presence of an attack of the enemy. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil is a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. The devil is literally walking about, looking for your thought life, looking to tell you who you are, looking to give you ideas that are full of deception. He wants to tell you that you're a nobody, you're a failure, you're too tall or you're too short. He wants to tell you you don't have the right skin color, you weren't born in the right family, you're not beautiful enough, you don't have the right situation and circumstance, you're not in the right time at the right place in the right position. God's perspective of you is that you are a giant killer, but the devil wants to convince you that you're a grass hopper. He wants to get in your mind because if he can get into your mind, then he will render you null and void in your life of no effect. You will be nothing and do nothing and be nobody. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. The Bible also says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 3 through 5, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh, for the weapons of our war Warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Your battle today is not with flesh and blood. It's not against your neighbor. It's not against your mom and dad. It's not against your brothers and sisters. It's not against your daughters and sons. Your battle today is against an enemy that's trying to steal your purpose and trying to steal everything that is precious in your life. This roaring lion that walketh about seeking whom he may devour. He wants to take away everything precious in your life and he wants to destroy and devour everything precious and he's going to do it by getting in your mind. He wants to wrestle away what God
God wants to do in your life. He wants to take every precious promise that God has ever given you and steal it from you and leave you with nothing. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4 verses 22 through 24 that you put off concerning the former conversation the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. Verse 23, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Verse 24, and that you put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. The Greek word for mind there is the Greek word to mean the seat of the emotions and affections, the mode of thinking, the disposition of moral inclination. In other words, it's your thinking process. It's your operating system. It is the way you are thinking. God wants you to change the way that you're thinking. He wants you to view your life from his perspective and not from the devil's perspective. I want to pray over your mind to be renewed right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I command the mind of every person that's listening to me. I command that your mind be renewed according to the promise and the provision and the glory of God, that we would put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. I command that our old way of looking at ourselves when we were in sin and lust and bound by the wickedness of this world, that it would be renounced and removed right now in the authority of the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I command that we come into a new way of seeing ourselves. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8 verses 5 through 7, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Verse 7, Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. We confess right now that we get our mind off the things of the flesh. We get our mind off the things of the world. We confess right now that we are changing the desires of our heart. We're changing what we care about. We're changing our viewpoints. We're no longer looking to the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. We're making up our mind that we're going to be spiritually minded. We're going to have life and peace because we change our mind in the name of Jesus. We get rid of old ways of thinking that are death. We get rid of the old way of living which is death. There's no life in the old way of thinking. There's no power in the old way of thinking. There's no joy in the old way of thinking. We confess that we have a new mind, a spirit mind. The Bible says in Romans chapter 12 verse 2, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The Greek word there is transformed, metamorpho. It means to change one's form or to be transfigured. It is the same word used when we speak of a caterpillar turning into a butterfly. This is the figure that was used when the Bible says that Jesus was transfigured on the Mount of Transfiguration. He was literally transformed into something different. I command right now that everyone listening to this be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that the operating system of your mind would be changed, transformed, that your mind would be blessed that your mind would be healed, that you would not walk according to the way you used to walk nor think according to the way you used to think. Your mind would be transfigured, that your mind would be transformed in a single moment, that even right now that you would have a transformation moment on a mount of transfiguration where you make up your mind, the old ways are past, the old ways of thinking are renewed and your mind is being transformed and you are being renewed in the spirit of your mind. I command right now that you give your mind to Jesus, that you give your thoughts and your processes and your reasoning and your understanding to Jesus. Everything that the enemy has tried to tell you in your life, that you would renounce it and rebuke it even right now. The enemy's tried to tell you you're a nobody, you're a nothing, that you should be despised, that you have nothing to hold your head up about. But I want to tell you today that God is confessing something completely different over you. He is confessing that there is therefore now no condemnation, that old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new, that God is confessing a new life over you right now that God is confessing that you can have life and have it more abundantly, that you may be able to renew your mind and prove what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. I confess right now that we walk according to the process, agenda, and motive of Jesus Christ, that we give Him glory and we walk according to His truth and His provision, that we walk into the blessing of God, that we walk into our promised land because God is going to make every giant in our life fall. Every strong tower and every strong wall in our life is going to fall down. We're going to march 
march around it with a renewed mind and a praise in our mouth. We're going to blow the trumpet and shout and the walls are going to fall. The enemy is going to be renounced and rebuke and the provision that God is destined for us to have is going to be ours. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 2 verses 5 through 11, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men and being found in fashion as a man he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even the death of the cross wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father I command right now that we would be able to walk walk with a renewed mind, a mind that says, I'm going to walk like Jesus walked. I'm going to walk according to his truth and according to his power. I'm going to walk in humility. I'm going to humble myself that the Lord may exalt me in due season, that at his moment, in his time, in his season, he will elevate me and I will come into his provision. I command right now that I will bow my knee according to the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and I will confess that he is my Lord and my Savior. The Bible says in 3 John chapter 1, verse 2, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou may prosper and be in health even as I soul prospereth. The word for soul in this verse means the mind. He said, I want your mind to prosper and be in health. I want your body to prosper and be in health. I pray over you right now that your soul would be able to prosper. Your mind would be able to prosper. Every attack of the enemy that's come against your mind would be renounced and rebuked in the authority of the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We confess right now that we have a new mind, a renewed mind, a glorious mind, a sanctified mind, a holy mind. I rebuke and renounce every attack of the enemy that's tried to come against you to convince you that you're a nobody and nothing. I command every attack of the enemy that's tried to keep you suppressed, sequestered, pushed down, squashed, would be renounced and removed in the authority of the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth right now. I speak over every person that's listening to me right now. The Bible says to renew your mind, to be renewed in the spirit of your mind, to be transformed, to be transfigured. You're not who you used to be. You're not all of those things from your past. The Bible says that you have become a new creature and old things are passed away. I confess right now that Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11 says, For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. I proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ over me right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I decree and declare that Philippians 4, 6 says, Be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God. God, and the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Verse 8, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 1, 7 that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. I love this verse because that word for power is the Greek word dunamis, which means strength, ability, power, power inherently residing in a thing by virtue of its nature. He's given you a power to have sound mind. He's given you power to have love. Love is the Greek word agape, which means selflessness. He's given you sound mind, which means moderation and self-control. In other words, you're stable and able. The Bible says in 1 John 4 and 4, you are of God, little children, and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I want you to know that you are greater than the enemy because Jesus Christ lives inside of you and Jesus can do anything. He has all power, all authority, all might, all dominion, and he lives inside of you. He loves you and he cares for you. As I go, I just want to pray over you. God, you see every person that is stuck through this video with me. I ask that you would be with them today. Give them a completeness of mind, a soundness of mind. Let your peace be upon them from the top of their head to the sole of their feet. I ask that you would touch their mind. Every voice of accusation, of condemnation that's tried to come against them would be removed, would be renounced, would be broken off of them right now. I command right now that their mind would be protected, would be saturated, would be covered by your name and by your blood. Lord, that you would watch over them and protect them and guide them. Let there be a sense of peace come upon them, God, and protect them, Jesus. Watch over them right now. I'm asking that you would be with them, Lord. I am asking, God, 
God, that you would go with them even right now, that every voice of accusation, every voice of condemnation would be renounced and broken. Every lie of the enemy would be renounced and thrown down and cast as far as the east is from the west. I rebuke Alzheimer's. I rebuke confusing thoughts. I rebuke lies of the enemy. I rebuke every disease that would try to come against their brain, against their brain cells, against the membranes, against the blood circulation. I command right now that every person's mind be healed not only as an operating system and as a thinking process, but their brain itself, the organ, would be completely healed right now. I command there to be a peace upon their mind right now in the authority of the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Let there be peace upon their mind. Let their thoughts be corrected and healed. Let their identity be corrected and healed. Let them realize who they are in you, Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray. All right, I know this was a little bit different today, everybody. I just wanted to pray over your mind, and I just ask that God be with you right now, that I might have been a little low-key today, but still God is able to do anything He wants to do through these prayers. And I love you, and I just wanted there to be a saturating peace upon you, and I just believe that God has just changed things for you, that things are broken off of you, that you're just going to walk free of condemnation, guilt, shame, the pain of your past. Let your mind be healed. Let your mind be corrected in the authority of the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. All right, and I love y'all, so I appreciate you and thank you for listening to me today. And also, if you've enjoyed these videos, enjoyed these prayers, don't forget to click the subscribe button and the bell notification so you'll be notified of upcoming videos. And I appreciate each one of you for listening to this. Also, I don't know if you've noticed, but I've got a web page up now, theohartzel.com. You're welcome to go there and look around. I'm going to be adding more content to it as time goes along. Like me, it's a work in progress. And I'm just trying to do what I can with the time that I have. I love y'all. I appreciate your prayers. I thank you for praying for me all the time. And I appreciate your kind comments and your testimonies. By the way, if you've been touched by any of the videos, the teaching material, anything that I've done, and you want to submit a testimony, I would like to put that testimony up on the testimony page. And I appreciate you taking the time to do that. I love y'all and I'll see you in the next one. God bless you. Bye-bye.